TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu and former IDF Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General and Reserve Benny Gantz are holding negotiations on advancing an emergency unity government for the purpose of dealing with the potentially devastating consequences of the spread of the coronavirus. Israel officially instructs the closure of most educational institutes throughout the country until further notice in efforts to contain the coronavirus. The United States conducted retaliatory strikes against Qatar Hezbollah in Iraq early this morning after the Iranian-backed militia struck a military base housing U.S.-led coalition forces, killing one British and two American service members. Jerusalem is evidently making every effort to combat the spread of the coronavirus throughout the Jewish state as the number of confirmed cases continues to rise steadily. As of this morning, the Israeli Health Ministry confirmed more than 125 cases, a staggering rise since the 25 that were identified at the start of this week on Sunday. Speaking at a near-daily press briefing from the Israeli capital, Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu highlighted the need to bolster both global and domestic cooperation to combat the potentially deadly contagion, as the coronavirus does not know any man-made perspective or physical bounds. הנגיף אינו מתחשב בגבולות של מדינות, הוא לא מבחין בין יהודים ולא יהודים, בין דתיים ולא דתיים, בין אנשי ימין ואנשי שמאל. כולנו בסירה אחת. למעשה, כל האנושות בסירה אחת. The Israeli leader also sought to explain the gravity of the coronavirus, which must not be taken lightly by anyone, as its characteristics are similar to the deadly Spanish flu, which claimed the lives of tens of millions of people during the early years of the previous century. Netanyahu explained that opposed to the common flu, which claims the lives of about one out of every thousand infected cases, the coronavirus has a mortality rate of between 2 to 4 percent. This means that out of every 100 infected people, two to four people may lose their lives. צפי התמותה הוא בין 2 ל-4% מכלל הנדבקים. זהו שיעור גבוה מאוד, מאוד. זו מגפה אמיתית. ידידתי, קאנצלרית גרמניה, אנגלה מרקל, היא כימאית, אישה במקצוע, אישה מאוד שקולה, מאוד אנליטית. היא העריכה שבגרמניה כשישים, בין, שבעים, בין שישים לשבעים אחוז מכלל האוכלוסייה ידבקו בנגיף הקורונה. מדובר ב... אם היא צודקת, בכחמישים מיליון בני אדם. עכשיו, כיוון ששיעור התמותה הוא בין שניים לארבעה אחוזים, תעשו לבד את החשבון של מספר האפשרי של האנשים שימותו מן המחלה. מדובר במספרים גדולים, גדולים מאוד. ואצלנו זה עלול חלילה להגיע גם כן למספרים גדולים. ולכן אנחנו מצווים לעשות הכל, הכל, כדי שזה לא יהיה. Netanyahu also once again seized the opportunity to highlight the top goal of Jerusalem's efforts to limit the spread of the contagion, including a series of measures that aim to avert devastating consequences. היעד העליון שלנו הוא להאט ככל האפשר את קצב ההדבקה. כך נוכל להרוויח זמן יקר, ראשית, לצמצם את מספר החולים, לטפל בחולים שחלו באופן כזה שמערכת הבריאות לא תקרוס, תוכל לטפל בה, ושלוש, שלוש, להרוויח זמן יקר כדי לנסות למצוא חיסון הנגיף בעזרת מיטב המוחות. מיטב המוחות בארץ ובחוץ לארץ, אנחנו משתפים פעולה. היינו הראשונים שחייבנו כל מי שבא מכל מקום שהוא בעולם בבידוד של שבועיים. הטלנו חובת בידוד על מי שנמצא בסיכון להדבקה. מנענו התכנסויות של יותר מ-100 אנשים. וגם את זה אני מבקש שתימנעו גם מזה, תימנעו ככל האפשר מהתקהלויות בכלל. הקצבנו עשרה מיליארד שקל 
לעזור לעסקים שנפגעו מהקורונה ולחזק את מערכות, מערכת הבריאות שלנו ומערכות קריטיות אחרות. אנחנו משקיעים משאבים עצומים כדי להגביר את קצב, גידול קצב הבדיקות שלנו. אף על פי שאנחנו במקום גבוה מאוד פר אלף איש בעולם, אנחנו רוצים לשפר את עצמנו עוד יותר. In addition to the measures stated by the Prime Minister, Netanyahu announced a new decision by the leadership in Jerusalem to close educational institutions all over the country, effective immediately, including schools from the fourth grade onward and all universities. Today, And while the transition government in Jerusalem, under the leadership of Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu, drew praise from parties on both sides of the political aisle over its efforts to limit the spread of the coronavirus, the persisting political deadlock in Israel limits the cabinet's legal capacity to undertake all necessary comprehensive measures. That is why Netanyahu asserted the need to immediately advance negotiations for the formation of an emergency national unity government. לפני 53 שנים, ערב מלחמת ששת הימים, קמה בישראל ממשלת חירום לאומית. מדינת ישראל התלכדה כאיש אחד וניצחה. אני קורא להקים ממשלה דומה עכשיו, עוד הערב, ממשלת חירום לאומית. בלי שום היסוסים, בלי שום דחיות. זאת תהיה ממשלת חירום לתקופה מוגבלת, ויחד נילחם להציל. את חייהם של רבבות אזרחים. אנחנו חייבים לשים בצד את הפוליטיקה, אחר כך יהיה זמן לחזור בדיוק לנקודה שאנחנו נמצאים בה. אבל כרגע מה שנדרש זה אחריות לאומית, והאחריות הזאת, לאומית ואישית, גוברת על כל שיקול אחר. נטפל במשבר בכוחות משותפים, מתוך אמון בינינו, שרק דבר אחד צריך לעמוד לנגד עינינו. טובתה של מדינת ישראל, בריאותם וחייהם של אזרחי ישראל. In response to Netanyahu's call, his main political rival, Blue and White Chairperson, Benny Gantz, announced his readiness to immediately advance the formation of an emergency unity government. Gantz wrote on his Twitter account that he spoke a short while ago with Prime Minister Netanyahu, during which he offered him to immediately hold a meeting between their respective negotiating teams in order to examine the possibility of establishing a broad national emergency government in order to combat the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. The former IDF chief further underscored that regardless of the outcome, he will support the current transition government of Prime Minister Netanyahu in any activities that relate to the Israeli public's interests. Meanwhile, in spite of the severe strain the recent measures are causing to parents of school children, the Israeli public displays understanding with the closure of most educational institutions. I understand the situation. I am really, you know, support. I'm supporting the situation. I mean, it's the... at least what we can do and uh, we need to be you know all together and, and think together and act together uh, in order to to save lives that's it it's not about us anymore it's about people so we just do what we we need to do uh, so we came to take uh, his books from uh, from school because uh, we got the message that you know the All the schools are cancelled until after uh, Passover and uh, we came, we took the books and now we're heading home, uh, he will uh, learn from home. It is important to underscore that the decision to close most educational institutes in Israel does not apply to daycare centers, kindergartens, boarding schools and schools for special education as well as for youth that are defined as at risk. For more information on the latest Israeli measures, we encourage you to visit our website at www.tv7israelnews.com, where we have established a direct link to the Israeli Health Ministry's guidelines in the English language. Turning now to Iraq, where the United States conducted a retaliatory strikes against the Iranian proxy Qatar Hezbollah early this morning. The American bombardment came in response to a deadly rocket attack on the Taji military base earlier this week. where U.S.-led coalition forces are stationed. Three troops were killed in the unprovoked rocket attack, including one British and two American service members. 
In response, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo tweeted that the deadly attack will not be tolerated and acknowledged his statement by his British counterpart, Dominic Raab, who asserted that those responsible must be held accountable. While the United States devastated multiple targets of the Iranian-backed militia, however, the British Defense Secretary Ben Wallace confirmed that the United Kingdom did not carry out any strikes. And while the top British defense official underlined that London supports the right of the United States to defend themselves, as they have done today, Britain reiterates that those who seek to harm its armed forces can expect to receive a strong response. Thank you for watching us. You can also watch us at tv7israelnews.com or tv7.fi. For any comments, please send your emails to israelnews at tv7.fi. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of our supporters, as your financial donations as well as your prayers are the reason TV7 Israel News is made possible. And I'd like to continue to encourage you, pray for the peace of Jerusalem as well as the peace and salvation of Israel, and also for all those impacted by the coronavirus. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov and Shabbat Shalom. We will see you again on Monday at the same time.